Each time I come up, I try to bring a bit of good news. But up here, well, you just can't know how bad things have become outside. A few days ago, a man in the storeroom, he asked me, what do you hear from Mr. Frank? I said, but I heard a rumor that you were in Switzerland. He said he heard that too, but thought I might know something more. And then today, just signing some invoices, I looked up and I saw him staring at the bookcase. He said he thought he remembered a door there. Then he said he wanted more money. Ten more guilders a month. I told him I'd have to think about it. Look, maybe he knows nothing, but out there, no one can be trusted. So should I pay him or take a chance on firing him? Or look, look I'll I'll pay him half. Then we'll see if it's blackmail. We'll we'll hope for the best. God? God? Is that what you thought I was going to say? That I was God? <laughs> My God, that I never figured out. Oh, you know, no offense, but I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> Do I look like God? Would God dress like this? No, Joe, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I am not God. <laughs> I'm a friend of God's. The saint! I render you powerless and motionless! It's, uh, all right, all right I, I, can't, I can't do it, but, but uh, just put the phone down, okay? Put the phone down, I'll tell you what I know, take it or leave it. Okay? All right, good, good. So, um, God and Satan were sitting around one day, you know, having one of those boring philosophical debates. This is a week ago, Tuesday. No, Thursday. No, Tuesday, because I, well, anyway. So Satan's sitting there, pink suit, gorgeous dead, little mole on his cheek and Satan says there is not one man on the face of the earth in the entire universe I mean, regardless of race religion Polish Jewish well, whatever who would not renounce God once the devil put enough heat on can you believe it two grown deities talking like this to which God replies and this is a quote we got it on tape there is one man would never renounce and that man is Da, 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 da. Joe Benjamin! Yeah! Thrills, right? So they make a bet. I'm only telling you what I heard. And the bet is this. The devil will make your life so miserable that you will renounce God. That's it. Message delivered. No tip necessary. It's been taken care of. So, uh, good night. Uh, good luck. God bless. <laughs> but I doubt it. Tut, tut. Grace me no grace, nor uncle me no uncle. I am no traitor's uncle. And that word grace in an ungracious mouth is but profane. Now why have those banished and forbidden legs dared once to touch a dust of England's ground? But then more why, why have they dared to march so many miles upon her peaceful bosom, frighting her pale-faced villages with war? Come, thou because the anointed king is hence? My foolish boy, the king is left behind, and in my loyal bosom lies his power. Uh, were I but now the lord of such hot youth, as when brave Gaunt, thy father and myself, rescued the black prince, that young Mars of men from forth the ranks of so many thousand French, how then should this arm of mine now, prisoner to the palsy, chastise thee and minister correction to thy fault. Thou art a banished man, and here art come before the expiration of thy time. Now, the story I want to tell you tonight is a story about the time that, well, 
Joseph wanted to throw Jesus out of the house. No, it's true, it's true. Well, you can't blame him, actually, can you? I mean, look, Jesus is almost 30. Well, he's still living at home, got no job to speak of, and he's running around every other night with the apostles. They follow him down the road like little duplins, just hoping that he'll walk on a lake or a river. They'll all dive in. It's Miller time! So, on this uh, particular day, uh, Joseph yells up, Come on down, son. Breakfast is on. Loaves and fishes. Mmm. And Jesus yells back, I do what is slop. Slop, is it? Here I am working all my life to put slop on the table. And your mother fixed it just the way you like. No bones. Well, you're going to eat it, you little squid. So at this time, Joseph is getting very angry. So he rolls up his sleeves and decides to go upstairs to give Jesus a piece of his mind. But Jesus knows that Joseph is coming. Well, he's God. He knows everything. So Joseph's going halfway up the stairs. All of a sudden, Jesus flings the door open, points at him and says, I don't have to listen to you. You're not my real father. I know. It cut Joseph to the heart. When Joseph heard these words coming from his only begotten stepson, he fell down on his knees and he started to cry. And he cried. He cried, 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 cried. He cried more than any man on earth. He cried for 40 days and 40 nights. He cried so much that there was a flood. And then he went to a shed and he built an ark. And then all the animals came in two by two by two. Well, that's not true. Except the weasels. The weasels went to England and they became the Brits.